Hi everyone, Jeffy here and welcome back to Around the World in Many Days. Today's episode is number 33 and it's titled An International Affair. Now today uh, we have a puzzle type that we've never done before, but don't worry if you're uh, expecting a new Japanese name that I don't know how to pronounce. Uh, sorry to disappoint, it's a code word puzzle this time. Let's read the rules. So this is a code word, uh, code word puzzle. Each of the numbers 1 to 26 stands for a different letter uh, A to Z. Find the correct values for each number so that every entry in the grid makes an existing word found in the UK Advanced Cryptics Dictionary. Letters outside the grid are not part of the code word are, and are only there to help you find the final answer in the end. So here we have a code word grid and then some letters outside the grid that we don't need to worry about when solving. And we also have uh, a table of with all the, the letters next to the grid here. And where, what are we looking for then? Let's see. So today I have visited twin cities straddling an international border in an extremely photogenic place. Can you guess where I am? Love Gladys. So here we are looking for a, a, a place on the border between two countries, basically. Uh, let's just open the, and that's the only puzzle. Uh, puzzle this time, there's no uh, nothing, nothing uh, in addition to that. Obviously, we need do need to figure out what these uh, letters are, uh, outside the grid mean. But we also have the the links to the dictionary. So if you want to solve this using the dictionary, uh, I have uh, included a a link where you can actually use it. Uh, search search the dictionary and check whether your um, the word you are putting in is in the dictionary or not. But we are not going to be using it here. Uh, let me open the, the editable grid then. And let's see. So, so we're going to be putting numbers here and one number, uh, each number has a different letter. And now a uh, little, uh, little something to note about the English uh, alphabet, it has 26 letters. So the numbers 1 to 26 uh, means that we have to use every letter once. So how do we start with code word? And uh, there's not much to go on on the on the grid. Basically, the uh, the thing that you can do here is find patterns that are very limited, very rare patterns, that very few words uh, match. Like for example, this one, two, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six is useless for us. So this could be something like, um, this could be any, any letter, first of all. It could be like, uh, does banjos work? Banjos, just a random word. As long as there are, there's no repeated letter, any word fits here. So we're not going to, be, going to be starting in this one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's probably the, maybe the, the least restricted here. But uh, if you think about what would be the opposite of a one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, now that would be something that has a lot of the same letter. So something like here we have five and five, still plenty of options, but there's one word in particular in the grid that's very restricted, and that's this, that's this central word here, it's 11, 11, and then again 11, 11. So that's going to be our starting point here. Now, the first thing to note about this two 11s in a row. It can't be just any letter. Like two A's is, is going to be impossible to fit an English word there. And, or two J's, let's say. So immediately this these being uh, doubled limits our options quite a bit. Now it could still be a few few letters. O, O works as a double. E, E works. T, T, perfectly fine, and so forth. So there are, uh, are some Still some st some options here, but once we fill in like TT and TT, we can see that there's no word that fits here and we ha need to have another T here. Now N is another good option for a du doubled letter. Un, non, neon or something. But once we get to the correct letter, which is S, now we should be able to see what letter, uh, what what words fit here. And there aren't that many. And um, 
and obviously you can look this up. The search tool that I added uh, has an uh, has a like um, regular expression um, functionality. So you can just put uh, if you know the syntax, you can just put in uh, this pattern and see what words come up in that dictionary. But where's the fun in that? Uh, but the, the words that would fit this SS, SS, S pattern would be one is assessors and one is uh, assassins. Now, both have this A here, E, I know. This would be, if this was assessors, this would be E, but it can't because A is one. So it's going to be assassins. It's going to be our starting word here. Now, that gives us a good start for for uh, for the rest of the grid because we have a bunch of bunch of very common letters. So obviously the the numbers that occur a lot in the in the grid are going to be some of the more more. They're not going to be J's and Q's. They're going to be you know S's and E's and N's and T's because those are the the most uh, most used letters in English basically. But uh, now that we have one word in the grid, the thing we do is we, first of all, we mark what uh, letters are what numbers. And then second of all, we fill everything that we know about, fill in everything that we know about the grid. So all the ones are going to be A's now. Fill in all the A's that we can. And I always miss one or two when I do this and then I, have to go back to this table and that's why we we write them down here so that we know what we've used uh, so one and then 11 is s so where are the 11s there are quite a few 11s because s is such a common common letter here we have 11 is there anything else uh, 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 I think that's it. And then we have the N and I as well. So N is 10. We can fill in those. And we can already start looking at the words that are the most restricted once we fill in everything that we know, because that's, that's going to be our, our next order of business is finding the, the next point where to look at. Uh, any other tens? I don't think so. Then we have twelves, which are the the eyes of twelves. So let's try the let's fill those in. Not sure why is it try because obviously we can fill them in. So here we are. Twelve, twelve. I think that's it. All right. So what's going to be obviously these long words? This one, especially this one and this one, are going to be super restricted, and we can probably find just that that word if we look up looked up that pattern in the dictionary. We're not going to do that. We could there's a repeated letter here, so we could try to put some le letters that we haven't used yet and try to find a word that fits here. Is there an even easier opening? This is very very restricted right so this could be uh satins no it can't be satins because of this s this is not an, not an 11 it can't be s um something in it could be g uh sating for example saying it could be satiny with a y here t we haven't used so <clears throat> Too many options still to uh, to really uh, go forward with this word. How about this one with the three S's here? This is this doesn't have many options, <clears throat> and um, the only one I can see is sinuses. So U being here and then E being the five. Now we can fill that in. <coughs> Excuse me. We can fill that in and. E being five is going to give us a lot of letters, and if E is wrong, if sinuses is wrong, that should be very, uh, very visible in the grid because we are going to be putting a lot of 
wrong letters. So let's put in sinuses. <coughs> Fill in the the, far, the E's first. So we see if we run into any impossible patterns that way. And I know we won't because I know it's right. But uh, I mean, if I was solving this, I wouldn't know that that is right. So that's why. That's why we are doing it in this order. So that looks good. And uh, this is still a pattern that works, something like seeks or, well, not seeks, S can't be here, but something like deems would work here. Um, and then we have um, the U here as well. Did we miss any fives? I don't think we did. Uh, U here is 11 then. We should mark the five there. And U, did I say 11? It's 19. Yeah, numbers are difficult. Uh, 19 is U, so there aren't that many U's, are they? Are there? Now U is going to be, and in code words in general, U is a U is a useful letter in for one very specific reason, and that is for locating a Q, because Qs almost always have a U next to them. And we have. Uh, all the 19s here. So U, U, U. So basically, if we, we are going to have a Q uh, next to a U, it's going to be this 20 here. We don't know it, know that it is yet. Like it could be in a word like Iraqi or something. <laughs> but most likely it will be. So that said, even putting in the Q doesn't give us a lot. I mean, how many 20s can we, how many Qs are there going to be in this grid? I think the answer is just one. So yeah, yeah, it doesn't give us any anything anyway. If this is Q, so we're going to have to wait a bit and see see whether we get that from somewhere else. So sinuses was this. How about this word now? Can you figure out what this word is? Just looking at this pattern. Remember, these are the same letters, and this is the same letter as well. So we have one letter and. It, we can just go through these and see what letter would make sense. So, this by something, Ben, not looking good. This is a good uh, start for a word. This, da, something, den. Uh, but the, the correct one is going to be with an M. Miss, and it looks like mismanagement, doesn't it? So, M is going to be two. And we can fill in all the, the twos and then look at the, the remaining letters. Um, do we have a lot of M's in the grid? I don't think we do. There's M. There's an M. So this is going to be useful, this final M for this long word. Now that's, uh, by the way, we have an S here we haven't filled. That's an 11. So something ism is, is this long word here. And ism is a pretty uh, pretty good ending for a long word, right? So that's all the twos, I think. We have a 12 here we haven't filled. That's an I. So this pattern is very, very restrictive. UAI in the middle. And if this is anything other than Q, it's, uh, I mean, what are you going to put there? But let's re return to that once we fill in this mismanagement. So two was M. We filled that. Now this, T is, um, this 10 is going to be a G. No, it's not. What am I talking about? 10 was N. Miss Maga. No, no, doesn't look good. Miss, this N was just supposed to be filled anyway. This was the G. So G was, in fact, 15. Almost filled in the entirely wrong thing. But, but didn't, luckily. Is that the only G that we have? You usually have more G's because G's in, in things like the ING ending, but apparently not. So G was 15. Then we have T, which is going to be very useful. Now this is looks like satin, isn't it? So T is 16. Um, and that's going to be just filling in this word, Titan, which is a word, and it is in the dictionary. You're going to have to 
I mean, you don't have to take my word for it. The link to the dictionary is in the puzzle, so go ahead and check, but it is there. Uh, 16, is that all? thought there were more T's. All right, and then we have, oh, that's it. That's the mismanagement done. So now I think we can fill in satiny. I don't think there's another word, uh, another letter that fits here. I mean, satins obviously works, but this can't be an S because it's not an 11. So satiny, 25 being Y. And obviously, um, often these uh, very rare letters are going to be high numbers and um, more common letters are going to be lower numbers just because they appear uh, earlier in the in the grid. Uh, so why is 25? And do we have 25s here? It's very useful if we do find another 25 because why is such a restricting letter? Um, I think we're supposed to have another, another Y. There it is. So this word ends in Y. And this now is... It still has a couple of options. It could be... Oh, this 16 is T, by the way, but it still has a couple of options. Even with that T, it could be shyest or slyest. We have an H and L that we haven't filled. So still still don't know that. Um, what about this ism here? Now let's just check that we haven't forgotten any, and we have forgotten some, some letters here. So S is 11 and I is 12. So now this pretty much can't be anything other than impressionism. So O, that gives us, is that the final final vowel? We have one, two, three, four. Yeah, that's the final vowel here, O. So after filling all this, we have the, the vowel structure, at least for every clue now. So O is eight. Fill that in. So that's an O. We have an O here and here. This is almost done. This is almost done. Let's fill in all the rest of the eights before looking at anything else. I think that's all the eights. And then this P and R as well are going to be very useful. P is 17. So that's going to be, this is P now. And this is P. Is that it? There's a P. So we have the word stamps just filled in immediately. Yeah, that's all the 17s, I think. And R is going to be 6 now. So R here. That's an R6. R. R. And I think that's it. Now, this should just feel itself. Now we have so few few letters remaining. <clears throat> uh, let's see what's the most. Well, we can think about where, where we would put Q if not here. And I don't think we have any place to put Q other than here. So this is going to be Q number 20. That gives us exactly one letter. But now we can think about what would fit here. Quail would fit here. And then this could be leaks, for example. This could be equ mm, can, ah, this can't be E. This is actually S that ha we haven't filled. So S squids could be uh, or squi squibs, squicks, squiffs, squiffs. Doesn't look good. Squills is another thing. Has to be D, squids. Which is a is a word in the dictionary. Squid is sometimes uh, used as a plural as well. Squid, but the squids is also in the dictionary uh, with an s ending. So D seven, and let's fill in those. So D looks like dozens here. Uh, D here, and D here. So this can only be one word now. Is that it? I think that's it. So this central word is going to be bridesmaids. We have. Uh, also, we had this M all, all along, so figure out what this, now, this letter is. It's not that hard. So it's B, number three, and we fill in the Bs. We have a bison here. That's a word, so that looks good. Uh, any other Bs? Number threes? No. Uh, we have two we haven't filled, so that's M. And we have the N also we haven't filled, so that's an anemone. So that's, that is a word. 
um, anything else that we've just missed. This can still be slyest or shyest. Uh, this was bridesmaids. This now, what's going to be dozens, dofans, dohans, dudgeons? It's, it can't be anything that other than dozens. Dozens is the other word? I don't think it is. Dozens is going to be the answer. So nine is said. And I fully expect something like Dowens to be in the dictionary. And I look silly, but I mean, I'm used to it by this point. I think that's the only Z we had. This one then. Uh, maybe this is better. So E something apsed. It's going to be elapsed with an L here. And that not only gives us a lot of uh, a lot of words, and we can check immediately whether L is correct. So does that make a word with here? Ambler, that's a word. Almost, that's a word. So that's definitely correct. Fill in all the fours. Um, that's a four. Quail is a word. So and Lee something s. It's going to be a word. And reapply also is a word. So here we are with the Ls. And now to finish it off, we need C F. H, J, K, and then X, V, W. Uh, so this is no longer slyest. This is uh, L would be a four. So this is shyest. H is twenty-four. Any other twenty-fours? I don't see them. How about this? Can this be other than anything other than leaks with a K? Leaves. Leaves would be with an E A. Leaks with a C, that's not a word. Leaves, leaves, leaks doesn't look good. So K is it? K is it? 23 is K, not 32. 23. Mm. Is that the only K? I think it is. So what's this then? Overt. This is going to be overt. Can't be anything else. So V is 13. 13s, uh, that's just it. How about this one? So it could be axire, a wire, a gyre, a fire. No, now, a fire, if you're a fire, you are in fire. So a fire is, is a word in the dictionary. And that's the only thing that fits here. And F was 22. So 22s, no 22s here. Now, this is going to be. We're going to be using C, J, W, and X. And I think the only word that fits here is inexact. X here and C here. So X would be 21, which is the only X here. And C now is 18, which is weird that it's this rare, by the way. C is often much more common, common letter in a grid. But here we only have two Cs. And we can look at this. So it's not erected. This is not an R. R would be a 6. So it's ejected J. And J being 14 then. And 14 here. J. And the only remaining letter we have is W. Which fits here. So that's 26. And that should give us the congratulations. All right. So we filled in the code word. And it wasn't maybe. Once we got started. It wasn't maybe that that hard. Even without the dictionary. Obviously with the dictionary. it's pretty mechanical. You can just find the pattern and put it in the dictionary. But how do we find the where we are in this puzzle? So we still have these arrows or with, these, uh, with these letters outside the grid. Now that we have these um, correspondences between the letters and the numbers, we can actually know that these, are, these point to certain numbers. And if we look at the, the letters at that position, which these point at, maybe we can find the, the answer there. And let's see. So start at the top here. So M is 2. So 1, 2. So that would point at this I here. E is 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's this A here. Now what's V? V is 13. Now this is 13 by 13. So we are going to have number 13 here, this S. Now J is 14. Now what's going on there? We can't 
there's no letter here. That would be the number 14. There's 13, and then 14 would be here. But uh, actually, we have to count again. So, so because we have numbers going to up to 26. So that would be two whole rows. So we have to count again. So 13 here, and then we start again. 14 would be here. So that's this A here. This B then is 3. So 1, 2, 3. This H is 24. So we count four, uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Yeah, 24 was the was H. Then we have L, which is 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. That's this A. S is 11, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That's this G. Q was 20, so that's 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20 here. Then we have these three left. So Y was 25, so 13, and then another 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Then we have Z, which is 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And we have an I here, which is 12. This was 13, so this is 12. And uh, here we have the, uh, the letters that we need. And if we read row by row here, N, I, A, J, A, R, A, F, A, L, L, S. Niagara Falls, which is... Um, a place on the, the international border, which is what we were looking for in the first place. So that's Gladys's destination this time, Niagara Falls. And we can look up what that is, but if, if there's someone who doesn't know what Ni Niagara Falls is. So that's a place that looks like this. And I like this, uh, bringing up this photo, by the way. I'm, I'm going to be doing this every time now, looking at where we actually are. And so Niagara Falls, between the between the US and Canada. Obviously, there's huge, huge waterfalls on the US-Canada border. And, um, and we can look at the map where we are, actually. So uh, last time we were in, uh, between Tennessee and North Carolina, we were in the Great Smoky Mountains. And now we are going north, we're going to this, uh, this Great Lakes area, and we are in Niagara Falls. So Twin Cities, Niagara Falls, uh, is it Ontario, and Niagara Falls, New York. So that's Gladys's destination this time. So this was episode 20, uh, 33. Now, next time we are going to have another crossword. Uh, it's going to be printer's devilry crossword. And then one before that is going to be a, like, a, like a New York Times style crossword. So a couple of crosswords coming up next. So the, the next one is going to be called, and now I have to look it up because I've forgotten. So the next one is going to be called Camp, uh, campfire crossword. So I'll see you guys for that one. And for this one, thanks for watching.